Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a brief, and I do mean brief, brief, look at the status line. So, this is the status line right here. Right underneath the menu bar. You're going to find the status line to be a vital asset while working inside of Maya. And it's mainly for this area right here. The selection filters. But we'll talk about this area right yeah. here in just a second. In just a moment. Starting over here to the far left side, the first thing you're going to see is the uh, drop-down menu that allows you to switch between menu sets. And we talked about this in the last lesson. Right. So, moving on from there. The next three icons, they're going to allow you to work with files. We're going to create a new file. We're going to open a file. We're going to save a file. Now, you'll notice that as we move along, we've got these little graphic icons right here. And these icons provide a way for you to show and hide or expand and collapse, if you will, sure. sections of the status bar or status line. So in this particular case, let's say I don't ever use these methods for uh, creating a new scene, opening, or saving a scene. I, I could go ahead and click that right there and it's collapse gone. it. Yeah, it's out of your way. So now you'll notice that by default when you first launch Maya, that this guy is always open, but the one right next to it is closed. And this is a series of... Um, of uh, menu options, if you will, that allow you to set up presets that have already been created for various types of selections based sure. on if, are you working with animation, polygons, nerves, etc. So let's go ahead and close that down. We're going to get into that a lot more as we start working more with objects. Right. Moving on over, these three icons right here, Super especially important. these two, yeah. are going to become critical in regards to your understanding of how they work. Right. And that's going to happen soon as well. Um, basically, what we've got over here is our hierarchy and combinations mode. We've got our object type mode, and we've got our object, or excuse me, component type. And these control what selection filters that you have available over here, or pick masks as they are referred to. You'll notice that as I switch between these three modes, the icons that are available over here change. 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 Okay. Right. And what is pushed in changes as well. Now, this, to put it simple, because we're going to spend a bit of time on this later, this is going to allow us to control right here where I'm working an object type. What objects do I have permission to select at the moment? And you'll notice that by default, every single icon is pushed in. So I can select all types of surfaces, all types of deformers. I can select my lights, cameras, etc. Anything you need to select, That's you can right. pretty much grab. What is so cool, though, is I can come over here to this little drop down, and I can say, turn all objects off. Then I can come over here and be specific. A minute ago, I pointed to this one, and I, could s and I said I could select all surfaces. Right. Well, surfaces break up into several different types of surfaces. Sure. What if I want to be able to select only NURB surfaces? But you don't want to be able to select polygons or subdivision surfaces. That's right. Check this out. I can right-click on any of these icons and come down here and specify exactly what things I'd like to be able to select. Sure. So in this particular example I was giving, only NURB surfaces, I will simply click it, and you'll notice that it has now changed to an orange color around the icon graphic, indicating that I have selected not every, basically not every single thing under that icon has been activated. It's a... The selection is varied, if you will. That's right. That means one thi one or multiple things in there is on, while some other things are off. That is correct. And if we right-click, you'll say, bink, it says that nerve surfaces is the guy that's there. And what that means right now is that I if we had objects in our scene, the only type of object we could select would be nerves surfaces. That's, that's right. It. Create a polygon primitive, a sphere, deselect it, reselect it. I cannot. Create a nerves primitive, a sphere, deselect Reselect, and I can select the NURB sphere. But you can't select the polygon nope. sphere. Nope. I'll go ahead and hit delete to get rid of the NURBS one, and I still cannot select the polygon object. Yet if I come up here, deselect, right click, polygon surfaces only, click, I can now select. There it. you go. And just a, a brief thing that I'm going to be mentioning later on once we get deeper into using pick mask. Anytime you're using uh, the viewport and you can't select something, your eyes should come up here first. That's a fact. And we will drive this home over and over and over later on. That's right. So let me go ahead and take and switch this all back to objects on. Component basically is when we start working with the components that make up a particular object or group of objects. For example, a polygon sphere has a set of vertices that construct the sphere or sure. play a crucial role in constructing the sphere. And if you need to get in and select these vertices and move them around, we would want to switch over to a component mode and then make sure that vertices was selected. So you'll notice we have a bunch of different component types, and just like with the objects set, we can right click and we get a menu as to which things we would like to be able to we set. We have sub selections. So here's this, check this, it's really cool. I'll say I want to grab po um, poly vertices, and I'll come over here and I'll say I want selection handles, and I want maybe polygon faces. 
So what's nice is I can just come up here and I can start changing around just as easy as that. Sure. Okay. Very cool. So and look at this. And with certain things, of course, we can start mixing it as well. Right. So let's go ahead and just simply switch back over here. And we'll go ahead and turn these guys off. Switch back over into our object mode and move on. So get over here. We start dealing with locking objects. Um, and then this guy right here, highlight selection mode, on or off. And we'll talk about these a little bit later on when they become um, relevant. Yeah. Uh, moving on from there, we get a series of snapping tools. Snapping becomes very important when working in a scene when you need to have some level of precision going on. And we've got videos dedicated strictly to showing you how to snap. So right, right now, we won't worry about it. So moving on over a little bit further, we start working with construction history. And we're going to spend a lot of time later talking about the architecture of Maya and how construction history is formed, what it is, and how to deal with it. Moving on from there, we start getting into rendering options. And rendering options, of course, we can set up our settings. Uh, we can do an IPR render or a regular render. We'll talk about these later on when we need to worry about generating some final images. Right. And then finally, we move all the way over here to the right, and we start dealing with a few different things. One, we can do a selections. And this is mm -hmm. like quick sets, selects. Um, we can do numeric inputs, relative inputs, uh, absolute inputs. Why don't you go ahead and collapse one of these areas so we can see okay. everything hidden there back there? There we go. So, yeah, there, there you, you go. go. And we could just simply type names in here for things right. that we've already preset up, et cetera. We'll spend a little bit more time with this later, but bottom line is this is a way of selecting things quickly that you've already de designated as this is a group of things that I need to right. select quickly, or numerically inputting numbers into various attributes that are available down below. Exactly. And we'll look at this again a little bit later on. And then moving over from there, basically we have a way to switch between um, attribute editor, uh, tools and settings, and our channel box. And this is seen down below. So as I click this, you'll notice that I'm switching uh, what's being shown down here. And this right. will make more sense when we start talking about attribute editors, settings, options, and uh, the channel box and layer editor. Exactly. So that's it in a nutshell. That is the status line. And you're going to find the status line, like I said at the very beginning of this lesson, is a very vital part of the user interface. And it's one of those parts of Maya that if, if this is the first time you've ever looked at Maya's UI, you may not necessarily understand every button, knob, switch, and dial on the status line. The more you work with Maya, the clearer this is going to become to the point where you're going to be very comfortable using it and looking at it. Absolutely. And with that, that is going to wrap up the quick introduction to the status line. Thanks a lot, guys.